Hello again. I was finding my last program somewhat lacking in that it didn't show the current path being traveled. So I thought, why not animate that? And I came back and thought, well, this will take 10 or 15 minutes, but I've been at it for a couple hours. And um, let me walk you through the code and talk about what I had to do to make this work. Um, okay, I added this class called a visits tracker to manage the logic of, for a given point, and this is the origin, so this is zero, zero, this is one, zero, not in the, not as far as graphics goes, but as far as the model of these, uh, these nodes, then they're scaled and drawn uh, bigger. Um, but the visits tracker keeps track of the number of visits for each point. And it also internally, well, I'll get to the internals when we, when we come to it. I'm going to just skip over it for the moment. But we create one. And it needs to know the maximum number of jumps so it can create storage for what it needs. Um, here's the setup function. And it's similar to the previous version, and you might remember from the previous video, video that we set these this array of choices, so you can either go to the right, or up, or left, or down, and then these um, things with the P or for, are for these two displays here, and the starting speed and the speed slider are for this. Take a look at this. Drag this guy over. Suddenly it goes super fast. Let's reload it and then let it run super fast. That's kind of neat that that's adjustable. I'll go back to slow in case you want to watch it. In case I get boring, you can just watch this or turn it off. Um, right, so there's the slider. And we set the frame rate to the default speed. That's all for setup. Now, draw. Uh, we bring the origin to the center instead of the top left. Set the background. Then there are a couple of functions, draw node and draw edges. And I think we'll come back to them. The visits tracker can give us a sequence uh, gives us an array of visits. And it gives the x and y coordinates and the number of visits for each. And then what we do is we draw each of those. So we call draw node. We tell it the x and the y and the number of visits. And then draw node um, sets the color based on the number of visits. That's the heat map part of it. Then we create a vector at the center, and we visit that point. And then in order to draw these lines for the current path, we create an array and we put the center node in there. Then we draw the center node. And then we have a loop to do the, the jumping to, to randomly, to make the random path. And we do that once for each of max jumps. We randomly choose one of the movement choices, and we add that offset to the position. And then we push that position into the array that's going to be used to draw the lines. Then we visit that node, and then we draw that node. All right, that's that loop. Then we draw the edges, which are these lines between the nodes. And then we update these last two bits, the number of trips we've taken and the number of nodes we've visited. All right, now it's time to look into some of the details here. So how should we do that? Why don't we look at the visit tracker first? It is a class. It has a constructor. It remembers the maximum number of jumps. And then it creates an array. Um, 
it's kind of a two-dimensional array, but I allocated it as a one-dimensional array, and then I'll map the the x, y values to a one-dimensional offset into this array. And just for efficiency, it keeps track of the number of nodes that have been visited. Otherwise, it would have to consult the array, which is imagine it as being kind of sparse. So imagine, uh, let me restart this. Um, so imagine that the visits tracker creates an array big enough to, to hold all the nodes in the rectangle surrounding what it actually uses. So there's some empty space. But it makes it a lot easier to, with constant time, look up the number of visits for a particular um, coordinate pair. Um, here's the visit method of this class and it calls get index and get index is where we take the x and y coordinates which you, you might remember can have negative values so this is here's zero zero this is minus one zero and we can't have negative numbers in array indexes so we have to somehow shift things around a little bit um, so let's look at get index it has to know the length of each row in the imagined two-dimensional array, and that's equal to two times max jumps plus one. So when, once this gets built, we'll have one, two, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, that's 10, and then one in the middle, that's 11. So max jumps becomes 11, and then we Sorry, length becomes 11. Then we need to modify the x and y coordinates so that they won't be negative. So we shift them right by max jumps. So um, 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. Max jumps is 5, so we shift that minus 5 to a 0. So the leftmost one is 0 instead of minus 5. Same thing with y. And then we take the, this uh, row and we modify it by the, the row length and we add the, the column to it. So that's how we take two numbers and make them into just one. Maybe you've seen this kind of thing before. That's get index. Back to where we called that from here. Um, now we have the index within our one-dimensional array for the x and y coordinates. Then we look in the array to see if we have any previous visits. And if we have not, then we realize this is a new visit, so we increment num visited. Then we want to do two things here. We're updating visits array given previous visits, or zero if we didn't have a previous visit, plus one. And after we update it, then we still have the value of the number of visits to this place, and we return that number of visits. Okay, that's visit. And visits returns this array of, for every, restart this, whoops, whoops, for every um, node that's been visited, we're going to return an element in this array. So we have to iterate over the array, and we go from um, minus max jumps to, to plus max jumps. For every x and y, we get the index, and we get the num visits. And if num visits is defined, in other words, we've been to that node, as opposed to one we haven't yet been to or we'll never get to, then we push onto this array an array of the x, y coordinates and the number of visits. So it's a, this provides a convenient way for the other code, for the, for the user or the client, to get 
all of the um, visited nodes along with their the number of visits. That's that. And then size just returns to the num visited. All right, that's it for visits tracker. Um, back to draw, I think we need to look at draw node and draw edges. And that's, that'll be the last of it. Draw node, how do you draw a node? Well, are we using this? Yes. Okay, so draw node. We compute the width of these, these circles to be equal to the spacing times 0 0.7. And then the visits hue limit allows us to have more than 100 visits to a place without upsetting the heat map. It will never change if you exceed 100 visits. It's just gonna, it'll get red and then it'll stay red. Then we calculate the hue, and that comes from this limited um, limited visits count, which has a range of values from zero to the limit. And we map it into this range of numbers, um, one-sixth of the way around the color circle, which takes us to yellow, to zero, which takes us to red. So as the visits increase, the hues change from a sixth of a circle down to, down to zero, yellow to red. Then we fill the, we set the fill color to the hue, and normally we'll have the saturation be 100%, the brightness is always 100%, but when we're drawing these white ones here, the current path, we highlight those. So here's this highlight formal parameter. And if that's true, then we desaturate. And that's what makes these white. We've just removed all the color. Then we set the stroke weight to three, which is the thickness of the stroke around the ellipses. And then we draw an ellipse. That's how we draw a node. How do we draw an edge? How do we draw all the edges? Well, uh, they're gray. They have a thicker stroke weight of six. Here's a loop, and you remember the array of um, coordinates for where we're to draw the, it's really the, yeah, for where we're to draw the lines, to connect the lines. So we get, we get um, an element in this array for all, it's really six, even if it goes back on itself for all six of these. So we visit all of them except the last because we're going to draw a line from each one to the one ahead of it, except for the last one. And so LP is this array of arrays where we've got I to take us through. So these are all LPs sub I's. These two are, and then these are I plus one. This is the next one. Zero and one are the X and Y values. So these give us the coordinates of the line. So there, for each one of these, there's six lines and six pairs of coordinates. So six times we get X1, Y1, X2, Y2, and we draw a line from X1, Y1 to X2, Y2. Okay, I'll just leave you with running it again, it's sort of fast. And I hope you enjoy that. I'll update the code, see the comment, the description in the video for the link to that. See you next time.